Yeah. Hello everyone. Welcome to this morning show Does What. I'm Tom Slop. I'm coming from Croatia. I'm not sure if you know where is Croatia, but this is a really small country in the middle of Europe. Actually it has only two and a half million citizens there. But we have great, really great coast and really great soccer players. Anyway, uh, today I will speak about uh, uh, chatbot development. I'm not sure if you are familiar with chatbot development at all or cool. Okay, we will go through through the whole process from the beginning. Okay, uh, so the name does bot actually mean nothing. So there was an early 80s uh, in the Europe was a techno or Euro dance mania. I'm not sure if you are aware of that, but during these days uh, there was many many popular techno projects there in Europe. So one it was uh, United Six or Uzex Romantic from Germany. They had two great hits. Number one hits during these days. One was Das Bot, and second one was I Want to Be a Kennedy. You probably don't know any about about that, but during these days, that was really great hits. So that's the reason why I use the name Das Bot. Okay, before we start with chat development, I'd like to just put you in the context to better understand what I want to show you actually today. Uh, I, I will show you one one chat bot, uh, which kind, let's say, we, tr we will try to build during this session today. Uh, there in Croatia, I'm working for several companies. Uh, I'm working for my own company, software development company, for a five agency, which is one of let's say top number one uh, mobile development company in uh, Croatia, which has uh, the main office in New York City. I work for TopTel and I work uh, also as a lecturer on a uh, university college algebra in Zagreb. So it's a really small university, but for, for us it's important because we are a private university and now, which, which is not very common actually in Croatia, only few private universities are there, and we are the top number one actually IT, uh, IT university there. Right now we have more than uh, 1,300 active students there, which is not something for you in the States, but there in Croatia who has actually uh, three and a half million citizens there, it, it, it is really something. But <clears throat> what the problem is, with every new student, we have actually the more problems with the student service, like any other, like any other university. So we need somehow to solve that issue. Uh, Possible, possible solution is not to hire more staff to the student service. So other thing that we could do is, let's say, re-engineer our processes, internal processes, and make it more faster and more fluent. And then what we do, we actually discover, I mean discovered, during our research we discovered that more than almost 80% uh, of top students' issues could be easily solved actually to some existing services, which is not connected anyhow. So, so the solution for their issues actually exists somewhere inside Algebra, even on the web page, social networks, internal uh, internet, or something like that. Okay, so we, we decide to combine those services, make an API, and make it optimized. So the solution, one of the possible solutions for that is to build some kind of mobile app or web app or something, but we decide to build a chatbot, actually. It looks pretty, pretty nice, it's still in hard development. But the key concepts are actually here. There's uh, three possibilities. One is when students need some basic information, so like contact info, prices, something like that. That's something that actually exists on our website or somewhere. So the chatbot should be able to go to that kind of open sources, grab those data, and present it to the user. Second possibility is something which is not open source, uh, open to public. That's something that which is 
our internal, let's say, student homeworks, student theses, something like that. Although theses should be digitalized and put some kind on a knowledge base, algebra knowledge base, so the chatbot should be able to go to that knowledge base and try to find the answers there. And the third one is actually if there is no there is no uh, possibility to find the answer on those two uh, scenarios, first two scenarios, then we can go to internal staff or CRM and try to best person try to, best, to find the best person who can solve our issue. So let's say if, I, uh, if I'm doing my homework and stuck on some, I don't know, algorithm that I don't understand, I need a person or a student or a professor or whatever who can help me with that algorithm. And also here's some other things that we can do. I, I don't know, that part of the chatbot or our system should be able to, I don't know, borrow me a book from a library, uh, check when I have next exam, or check my finances, which is also very important for private universities. Oh, you maybe know who is this. Lucy Moran from Sheriff Truman office in Twin Peaks. Have you ever watched Twin Peaks? <laughs> okay, it was very famous actually, uh, TV show, David Lynch TV show, uh, pictured in uh, Seattle during early 90s. Anyway, uh, this is Lucy Moran, he's, uh, she, she is uh, secretary of Sheriff Truman, and she's the one sh who, who should actually solve any issues that Sheriff Truman has, like any other secretary. Uh, so, we choose her name, Lucy, for our chatbot. You know that any chatbot should have some name. Okay, so I will just show you a few scenarios how the chat chatbot works. For this chatbot we use, uh, for now, we use the Slack. Slack as a channel, but it could be any kind of other channels like Facebook Messenger, uh, sorry, Skype, but it could be Slack, uh, Facebook Messenger, web chat, whatever. Okay, so uh, I'll start interaction with Lucy. She recognizes that it's me, and she offered me a few shortcuts, like any other chatbot that could, let's say, that's common, common things that, that the students need to do with the chatbot. But I prepare something more weird, let's say. Uh, first one. I will just copy, it will be easy then typing. So InfoEduca, InfoEduca is our student digital service. So sometimes that InfoEduca is blocked. A very common reason why it's blocked because student doesn't pay all the bills that she, he could pay, she, he need to pay. Okay, so I will check, I will ask Lucy to check my finances. If there are any issue about my finances, maybe that cause for blocking my InfoEduca. And Lucy go and try to my CRM. Okay, I pay all my dues. But so there is probably another reason why why it's blocked. But what I want to show, show you here that uh, Lucy recognized my intent that I want to check my finances. So she go to the branch of finances and check my finances. I could do something more complicated like this. So, I'm thinking to go study abroad. It's a very popular Erasmus program there in Europe for student interchange. But I need someone, I need someone who can help me with my, with my uh, enrollment process. Okay, so I need someone who can help me. And yes, Lucy go to our internal staff database and try to best match who can help me with my enrollment process to Erasmus. If we go to our staff database, we will see that Christina actually is Erasmus coordinator. So she's the only one here specialized for Erasmus coordinator uh, process and she's the one 
who is the first choice, choice for me. So that's something which is easy. It could be more complicated. I could do something like this. So I am a student. And me and my pals, we are doing some job in Algebra Lab. We are almost done with that. So we need, at this moment, we need two marketing experts to help us to push our product to the market, let's say like that. So what's the intention here? To find two marketing experts for us. Again, Lucy will go to our internal staff database. And she, find, she, she found two marketing experts for me. So again, if we go to our staff database, yeah, so Natasha and Tomislav are marketing guys. Okay, so that's the reason why they came to me as a, as a two choices. But there is one more, there is Vanya. Vanya is also a marketing guy. Why those two? Why not Vanya? Well, because Vanya is not an expert. So I ask for two marketing experts. So there's, there's, there's something that I want to show you how Lucy can recognize my intents, what I want to actually grab. The situation could be even more complicated in a situation like this. So we are working on our project in Algebra Lab, but my, my teammates actually do, do nothing. So I'm pretty angry on them. And I, I desperately need someone to help. Okay, so again, I need to work in the experts, but I'm crazy on my teammates. And in this moment, Lucy found me only one, Natasha. So you know that we have in our database, we have two marketing experts, Natasha and Tomislav, our marketing experts. But if you just, just take a look at the picture of Tomislav here, you will see that he is a pretty grumpy man. And if I am in that moment, if I am crazy, so maybe, maybe two of us are not a good combination in that moment. So if you now take a look of our stuff database, you will see that yes, internal HR or students or whatever grade Tomislav with number, or I, mean, I mean the lowest grade in sentiment column. So that's the reason why he, he didn't choose. Okay. There's a few more things that I want to show in presentation. What we discovered during this process is that uh, building the bots is actually a pretty easy thing you will see today in this presentation, but the building intelligent one is pretty high. You need to interconnect so many services that could be able to, to discover knowledge that you need. Uh, from the IT solution perspective, bot here is actually just an interface. It could be anything. It could be web page, uh, web application, mobile application, bot, whatever. We use a bot. But from technology stack, that's the interesting part, because let's say I'm coming, I'm pretty, let's say technology agnostic, but I'm coming from Microsoft World, and all of these boats that I will talking about today is actually built on open source technologies. Everything in yellow is actually open source, just few services that we need to consume are not open source. Okay, let's see how to build a bot like this. I'll go step by step. Uh, just to make you familiar how to build a bot from the beginning, you will understand it's not it's not so hard actually, like it looks. We have four or four or five steps. Okay. So uh, this bot is built on Node.js. A Node.js and everything that we need for, uh, let's say, Hello World bot is a bot builder. So if we go to step one, step one is step one is great example of why the zoom in and zoom out it doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work. Uh, what we have here 
is two, two, two key things, or let's say two key ingredients for this scenario. Uh, one is Bot Builder. Bot Builder is a node package uh, provided from Microsoft. It's open source package. It's key ingredient for any chatbot based on Microsoft technologies. So there in the readme file you, you have actually few lines of code that you need to copy and paste to, to your node, to your JS uh, page, and you can start it on Node.js server and that's it. You have a hello world bot. Our example is even simpler than that. So if you check here, we need the builder, we need the chat connector, and we need the bot. Those two things, every bot has. In this moment, we will use console connector. So everything what we'll doing, we will be doing in a console. Okay. The, uh, the the end idea is to put chatbot somewhere in public and consume it in some uh, channels like Slack, Skype, etc. But for this purpose, we could use a console also. And now I will start my step one bot, and that's it. So if I type anything, you will see he, he will write uh, hi, I'm bot. I mean, that's normal because we have only one function here, so whatever I do, he will write I'm bot. So it's pretty stupid bot, but it works. It's hello world, hello world bot, and it works. What's, what's most important thing here to, to remember is dialogue. So every chatbot is built on several, one or I don't know, 100 dialogues. Like any web page. Web page, uh, website actually have many web pages. The similar thing is in uh, chatbots. So chatbot could have many dialogues. <clears throat> For example, why dial one dialogue is order a pizza. Second dialogue could be uh, choose what kind of pizza. And third dialogue could be pay a pizza. And I don't know, next could be receive, something like that. So those are dialogues. Every chatbot will probably have more than one dialogue. But this is Hello World. Second thing that I want you to learn from this session now is step two. So step two is actually almost the same, equal, like step one, with one difference. We have two functions here in our dialogue. So you have to say, okay, the first function will ask me what's my name. It's Tomislav. And he will say, hello, Tomislav. This is really actually important. Every dialogue, every dialogue could have more than one function in this functions array. That's something that we call waterfall. Okay, so why waterfall? Because the output of one or the first function will be input to another, and that's it. So if you go to order a pizza, you, you can add a many, more, many ingredients on pizza, so that could be a water flow actually inside of our dialogue. Okay, so dialogue is one thing, and waterfall is second thing that you need to remember. Every chatbot, doesn't matter which technologies are built, work on the same, same principles. Third thing is step three. Oh, this is, this is something uh, more complicated. I will not to explain everything, why? Uh, because uh, everything beside building a bot is actually not important. I'm trying to, here I'm trying to build a movie recommendation bot. So I want to ask my bot, can you please recommend me uh, one horror movie from early 90s? Let's say something like that, and he will grab and turn me back one movie. 
For that purpose, we will use uh, what we need is actually a MovieDB API or any other API. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of uh, MovieDB uh, portal or not, but it's free open service uh, built from community for community. So everyone of you can go there, register there, and start to sharing their knowledge, their experience about movies, etc. Uh, the good part here is they have open source and free service to grab the movies. That's something that we will use. It's nothing actually special. There's only a REST service that we will use uh, to grab a movies. What's important here, that we will need another node module. It's MovieDB. And you can recognize something that we didn't have before, which is intense. So the idea, the idea is to move to bot, to my bot, recognize my intent, my intent. What I want to do to here, if I ordering a pizza, he needs to recognize that I want to order pizza. If I if I want to grab information about movies, I want that he recognize my intent to to grab a movie, information about movie. Okay, that's the third thing that you okay, thing that you need to know about chat development. So intent. A very important thing. Every every chatbot has several intents, a hundred intents. Our algebra chatbot will have at the end, I don't know, higher, 200 maybe intents, possible intents. So if I want to check my finance, if I want to check my grades, that's also a different intents. Okay, so I have all here intent dialogue. And in my dialog, which dialog will be raised? It depends on the intent. So, if I check here, nothing of this is not important. If I check here, intense movie, he will know that he need to do something about movies. And that's basically it. We have only one, and we have just one more, which is, which is, yeah, default. We have default one and we have movie. So, in a situation on default, uh, default intent, he will arise dialog ask name. So you see that we have several intents and several dialogues. One of the dialogues is ask for a name, second dialogue could be a genre prompt, and, and the last one could, will be ask me for a year from which I want to my movie. So if I start my bot here, Now it's triggered default event, default uh, intent. Okay. So he asked me for a name, uh, about my name. Okay. Tom. Here we are. And he said, okay, I'm your one here. Hey. The only thing that he know actually is movie intent. So I need to write down movie. So my bot will recognize that intent as a movie. Now the movie intent is triggered. Now is genre prompt arised. Okay, which genre we? I don't know. We want to, I don't know, uh, action movie. Let's say action. Now it's arised a year prompt. Which year? I don't know. And here we are. Dragon Hill, the tree of something, I don't see. Okay, so that's something that my bot recognized. Go to MovieDB, try to find one, horror, one action movie from 90s. Okay, that's good. But everything that we, that we did till now, we did in console. The next step is actually put it somewhere on some of the clients like Skype, Slack, etc. For this example, for next example, we'll use the same example, but in the, in the emulator. So, step four example is equal like step three. The difference is only in 
we don't use console connector, but chat connector. That's the only actual difference. And the one more difference, we need the server for that. We need US internal Node.js server for that. That's the only difference. Everything below is equal like on a step tree. So you will see if I tr if I start my step three JS step four sorry it will be raised on a server on a port three nine seven eight okay so what I need to do now actually my bot is now served on my local server if you know address of my bot you can access yeah you can access them with your client Skype or whatever but I will use it here what happens here Have a problem. How this happens? Wow, I'm not sure why it zooms so much. Okay, I'll try to quit it. That's not good. Every time it happens with the live demos. Just a second. I saw zoom out. I'm sorry. I can I can show you that. I cannot show you that. Okay. Sorry about that. It doesn't work. Emulator doesn't work. You can go further. You need just to believe me. You can do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so. What I want to show you here with emulator is actually that uh, uh, that's not good. I should show you that. Anyway, it doesn't work. So the thing is that the same thing will happen here in a console, like an emulator, like an, my client as a, as a, um, Skype actually. So what we get do is last thing. Uh, which means that we need to publish our bot to the to the Skype, okay, or any other client services, which can be used. Mm, for that purpose, for that purpose, we can use uh, several several actually scenarios, but we will use uh, Azure Azure uh, Cloud Component for for serving a bot. But before that. Why I like to show why I like to show you an emulator, but it doesn't work. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have idea how to how to zoom it in or out. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to show you. So our bot, as you may saw here, is pretty stupid. Why? Because if I if I want to trigger uh, movie intent I need to write down movie movie word it's it's not good enough it's not good enough if you saw here if you saw here on my chatbot I could ask something like uh, mm, I don't know what was there yeah sentence like that so so the idea is from sentence like that that, that, that my that my uh, chatbot recognize my intent my intent find me some person for me who can help me and uh, recognize that I need two marketing experts okay that's something that we, that we need so to triggering like a type just a movie then ask for a genre then ask for a year is not good enough it could be better if I can go there and I ask her uh, me, I don't know what uh, tree horror from 
formalities. Something like that. That's something that we want. Okay, it's also possible, but for that we need some kind of uh, language understanding service. There is a many language understanding services in the world. Google has their own, Facebook has their own, uh, Microsoft also. We will use Lewis. Lewis, I will copy this sentence here. Lewis is Microsoft language understanding service. It's pretty good. It works pretty well. So, if you just take a look on the first page of Lewis, you will see a few examples. Let's say here, book me flight to Cairo. This is my first deterrence. From this, book me flight to Cairo. My bot should recognize book flight, uh, book flight intent, okay? And it should recognize where? To Cairo. Okay, that's two things. So if, you, if I press to this one example, you will see, sorry, you will see that, yes, book flight intent is recognized almost 100% sure. Okay, okay, but there is also more intense than that one. We have, I don't know, book flight, non location finder, etc. That's all uh, intense that we have. But from this sentence, he recognized that is that he need trigger book flight intent. That's not all. He also recognized entity Cairo, location. So we have two things. I don't know, if we go to, to order my piece, order me two pieces, here the intent is food order, almost 100% sure, and also he recognize that we need two pizzas. Okay. So that's something where our Lewis understanding uh, service could help us. What we need here is that we need a build a model. For our movie, movie bot, we need a model. And we tr need to train our model to become more occurs. So if I go to my apps, I have several of them here. But what we need here is movie app. Okay, if I go to build. That's what I'm talking So I have a list of several intents. There could be a hundred intents, it doesn't matter. But for our movie, what we need, actually three. Hello, that's for a start, as a default, movie, and none. Okay, so if, no, if nothing from my sentence is not recognized, then none uh, will be fired. None, none intent will be fired. If I go to movie, intent. That's actually really the most interesting thing here. I have a bunch of utterances here. Some of them I wrote out manually. Why? I need to put a few utterances manually because our bot, our Lewis model is pretty dumb from the beginning. He don't understand anything. So I need to train him. What I need to do is put some utterances there, like give me, sorry, like, Give me three top rated movies from 90s. Then I will just need to mark a few things here. So three is a number, top rated is sort by popularity, and 90s is daytime. That's something that I need to, uh, to be returned to me from my movie, movie intent. Or let's see here. Can you suggest me a horror movie from last year? So, horror movie, horror movie is a genre, last year is a daytime again. So, after the training, you will see here that all these utterances is pretty, pretty sure that belongs to my movie, my movie intent. Okay, so what I need my intent to turn me back? Those entities. Date time is a year, genre, number, how many movies I need, and sort. Let's say uh, top rated. That could be sort. So if I go here and test my model with the last utterance, could you suggest me three horror movies from 90s and press enter? Press inspect. You will see here, okay, yeah, it's a movie intent will be triggered. 
it's three number horror movies from uh, from daytime okay you understand that so that's something actually that cover everything that I need so if I if I ask my movie something uh, my my bot something like that he'll return me this that's everything that I need to fetch the movies from the movie DP okay we will check that code. We can, I cannot uh, show you there in a, in an emulator, but I will just come and put you a few comments here. What you need to to remember for this purpose, the only difference before step five and step four is that we need that we have here uh, Louis model model URL. It's my URL from my account. You will see it here. Here we are, endpoint. Okay. I will use that endpoint here. And I need a recognizer. Recognizer is key important thing here. Those recognizers could be several, a tons of that. I will use a Lewis recognizer. And then in my intense object, I will put all my recognizers. I could have more than one recognizer. And that's basically it. That's the only difference here. Okay. So my recognizer, we will turn me back intent movie or whatever. And based on that, I will go to another intense and everything else is the same. On hello intent, we have, we have none intent, we have movie intent, and one more is none. That's default. Okay. That's the only difference. Okay. So that, that chatbot we should public somewhere. We will public it to, to uh, Azure, but you can host it anywhere, wherever you have a Node.js server, even on your, your local machine, you can host it easily. We just, you just need the server. That's, that's basically um, the normal web app like any other. Okay, but what you need is to register somewhere your bot. Register it somewhere. So you need to say, okay, my bot is hosted here, okay, and you can use it on Slack, on Skype, or whatever. That's something that we need. There is something that where we need our Azure. I will show you how to do that. It's also a pretty simple thing. Uh, this is my Azure account. If you want to register, you have, I think, a year a free account for every service there. So if you want to play with that, you have enough time to do that. I will go to my um, resource groups. I have DevConf. Okay, so here I have, I have two things. One is my chatbot service, that's my server where my chatbot is served, and one thing is registration. That's it. This registration is a really important thing. On this registration, I will say where, where is my bot, where is my bot served, on which server. Okay, I will give him a name, an icon, and the most important thing is to choose which channel I will use, which channel. There are several channels. By default, you can use it on web chat. That's by default. You can then grab that code and put it on every page, web page that you want. That's a web chat. Second one that I uh, choose is Skype, and you have several of them here also. So basically, we, it could be covered pretty pretty much of the channels, possible channels. Let's say, I don't know, last one is Telegram. That's the last one. Okay, uh, I could test it in a web chat here. So that's the same web chat that you can implement on your, on your uh, web page. So if I ask my bot here the same sentence, like this, uh, so, Let's say like this. Okay, and here we have my favorite one and some other horror movies from 1890. Okay, so as you can see, it works. 
but I will show you how it looks. Reconnect now. How it looks the card. What we need to do, we need to go here on Asia, and we need to. You will see now. It's it's really 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 simple thing. We need to add a new resource. We will choose web app bot. Okay. We will press create. Only thing that we need is a name and technology. It could be built on C sharp or Node.js. And we will use EchoBot. EchoBot is Hello World bot. Okay, so when everything will, will be built, we just need to go to our bot and copy and paste and copy copy and paste the code for our step five and paste it there, and the bot will work. So if we work in our emulator locally, it will work once when it, when it will be published. But if you take a look on that code, you will see that it's basically the same code like we have on our step five. So that's it. Then. Then I need to go to my bot again. To my bot. And I have channels. Then I will go to Skype. It will send me the link. Send me one link. If I send you the, that link right now, you can add my bot to your to your Slack channel. If I press here, it will open my Slack, and it will add my bot to the to the Slack. And this is the the same bot. Okay. She or movies, okay. So it's the same bot like we had on our test chat on Azure, and that's basically it. There's only a few things that you need, should remember. First of them, from this session today, first of them is dialogues. Every chatbot should have more than one dialogue. Inside of dialogues, you have many functions chained in a waterfall. That's another thing. Then, third thing is R intense. I mean, R intense, yeah. Every chatbot should have at least two or three intents, like our movie bot. If it's specialized bot, then you have less than, I don't know, 10 intents. And in step four or five is recognizer. Okay, it doesn't need to be Louis, but it could be. There is a plenty of them on the market. That's key th four key things that I want to remember from today's session. Okay, mm, this my code is not uh, any part of this code is is not somewhere on the GitHub. But if any of you want uh, to share. If you want me to share with you uh, that code, you can contact me or my, I don't know, Twitter account or my LinkedIn account. I'll be glad to, to, to help you with the chatbot development if you if you want to do that based on <coughs> Microsoft technology, Microsoft Bot Framework. That's it for me today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask now or somewhere at the hall. That's it. Thank you. One question. What is the step six? Oh, step six. Mm, yeah, we need the emulator for that. But you saw that. Uh, no, I mean you. <laughs> it doesn't. So uh, here you can see that that uh, my movie actually uh, turned back to me uh, only uh, rough data like uh, title like uh, description and the, and the, and the link to the uh, image right so the idea is to present it not like that but like that but like this okay so we have a hero card here 
and three, three hero cards in carousel. That's something which is in step six. It's, it's more about, let's say, uh, chatbot design. But I cannot show you in emulator because it doesn't work for some reason. I wasn't see that any time. I don't know. I don't know even how to zoom it, zoom in it, or zoom out. Okay, we're done.